Alrighty guys, um, what up, it's Andrew here, and today we're back with another 2019 December Yusuko contest. Um, today we'll be looking at the Bronze Division Problem 1, or um, Cow G Gymnastics. <laughs> So if we just take a look here um, and we start reading, um, you can, we can see that it's actually rather short and therefore it's probably going to be pretty easy. So in this case, in order to improve their physical fitness, the cows have taken up gymnastics. Farmer John designates his favorite cow, Bessie, to coach the N, the N other cows and to assess their programs as they learn various gymnastic skills. In each of the K practice sessions, Bessie ranks the N cows according to their performance, and N is between 20 and K is between 10, and afterwards she is curious about the consistency of these rankings. A pair of uh, two cows, a pair of two distinct cows is consistent if one cow did better than the other in every practice session. Help Bessie compute the total number of consistent pairs. Alright, so each cow has a ranking, uh, each cow's number, and they have different rankings. And we're just going to check um, if those rankings are the same throughout each um, check. So the first line of the input contains two positive inter integers, k and n. So those are just the numbers that we're going to be looping for. And um, the next k lines will each contain the integers 1 to n in some order, indicating the rankings of the cows. Um, cows are identified by the numbers 1 to n. So if we just take a look at this input format here, um, we can see that in this case, for cow 4 is in ranking 1, cow, um, cow 1 is in ranking 2, cow 2 is in ranking 3, and, now, and cow 3 is in ranking 4. So the order that they're in marks the ranking, and the, number we see, the numbers we see here are actually just um, the n cow number. So, well, let's see here. The first line indicating the ranking of the cows. So if A appears before B in one of these lines, that means cow A did better than cow B. So in this case, let's just take 4 and 1, for example. In this case, since 4 is before 1, it um, therefore do, did better than, than cow 1. So I'll put on a single line the number of consistent pairs. So in this case, the answer is 4, and the consistent pairs of cows are 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, and 1, 3. So if we take a look at this, we can say 1, 4. So in this case, 4 is greater than 1 in all of these um, checks for rankings. Wait, what do they call them? Um... Yeah, let's we'll call them checks. So, uh, and let's see, two four. So basically, four is greater than four is in cow four is in a higher ranking than two in all of these. Um, three four cow. Um, in this case, four is also greater than three in all of these cases, and one three. So in this case, one is greater. One is always in a greater ranking than three in, in all of these cases. Now the one missing here would be two three, since um three surpasses two, and then it, um it gets left behind again. So we don't count that. So now that we ha uh, know how this problem works, um, we can start thinking of a thought process. All right, so I created this little GeoGebra thing to try to map out our thought process really easily. So if, we, um, if you'll notice that all of the cow's IDs are the same for each line. Therefore, we actually only need to check the first line's order orderings to check whether all of the lines are consistent. So in this case, we can see that four is before one, 4 is before 2, 4 is before 3, and when I say these numbers, I mean like cow 4, cow 1, cow 2, cow 3, and in this case, 1 is before 2, 1 is before 3, and finally, 2 is before 3. So 3 is last, so it's not before anything, so we don't actually have to consider that. And now that we have these pairs, all we need to do is check for each line and check whether each of these indexes are in this order. For example, um, if the four, if cow force index is before cow one's index, then we pa and it's passed. And basically, all we need to do is check every single one. So in this case, four one, um, four is before one, so that's we check that. Um, four is before three as well, so we check that as well. Four is before two, so we check that. So that's all consistent. And then we do the same for every, every line. And yeah, so that's our basic thought process here. So just count. So just look at the orderings on the first line and check for each line whether those orderings are consistent. So now that we have our basic thought process down, we can just start coding. All right, so now that we have worked out our thought process, we, if you would just open up your IDE and um, basically type in the basic input code. Um, I use buffered reader and print writer, and this helps us basically read in our input. 
So, um, I'm going to speed run through this as it's just reading in the input, and I'm going to spend more time on the thought process. <coughs> Sorry. So, in this case, we're just going to use string tokenizer to read in uh, multiple tokens. In this case, um, K and N. So, 3 is K and 4 is N. So, K comes first. Sorry about that. Um, truck passing by. So, it's string tokenizer. Oops, string tokenizer. We got to import the class. It goes new string tokenizer. Oops. So string tokenizer st equals new string tokenizer br dot read line, and then we read an in k, um, k, and that's going to equal to integer dot parson as it comes in as a string. So we have to convert it to an integer. Um, so it's um, just st dot next token. And then if you would copy and paste that, as we're just changing, it's basically the same thing for n. Only that it's, K, it's N, not K. And um, other than that, other than these two main variables that help us loop through the um, array or 2D array, um, we're just going to create some variables to um, mark what we're returning and also the 2D array that we're going to use. So we're going to use a 2D array to store this um, array of values as it's in like yeah, an array of values, so we're just going to use a 2D array. It's probably the simplest method you can use to store in all the rankings. We're just going to call it rankings, and it's equal to a new integer 2D array. All right, now that we have created this, we just need to read in all the rankings and put them into this 2D array we have. So in this case, um, let's just uh, do a double for loop, as that's how we're going to read it in. Oh yeah, also we have to fill in the dimensions for this 2D array. So let's just do K and N. And then we're just going to do a double for loop that's going to read in our um, input. So I go zero. I, I just use I because it's simple. Um, I just less than K as it's K by N times wide. And then we're going to do another one. Oh, yeah. Also, within here, we have to declare new string tokenizers. So if you didn't know, um, every time you read a new line with a string tokenizer, you have to reset it like this. So you just have to say ST. You can still keep the name. You just have to... Say new string tokenizer, beer dot read line. And then after that, we're just going to create the for loop with inside the for loop. And say, int, since i is already taken, we have to use j now. So in j equals 0, j is less than n, and j plus plus. So basically, we're looping through it. And then we say rankings. Oops, sorry. Yeah, in this case, yeah, it's going to be n. So it's rankings. Um, I J will be equal to integer dot parsent SC dot next token. Okay, so now that we have read in our array and our two variables, we can just start um, processing it and printing our output. So first thing we need to find a way to read in the first line and then check whether each of the values um, are consistent within the next few lines. So in this case, we're just going to do another for loop to read in the first line. So in this case, it's going to be so since each line is i values is n values long. So in this case, it's n is four, and there's four values for each line. So four cows in this case, we have to read do a double for loop with both starting n, um, both n times long. So in this case, i equals i equals zero. Um, I is less than n. Oh, sorry, not i times long, n times long. So we're just doing two for loops that um, go up to n. So in this case, um, i plus plus. And if you don't know why we're doing this, because if we loop through this, we get we first loop and get four, and we have to check for every other value, um, whether it's um, it's index, and then check whether those values are behind four for every other line. So in this case, for um, int j equals 0, um, j is less than n, j plus plus. So this is just how we read in the um, values for the first line. So in this case, um, let's just put, um, so in this case, we're just um, checking each pair. So each pair has two, two cows. We're just going to make um, two variables for each of those cows. So yeah, so in cow 1 equals rankings. And since we're doing the first line, it's going to be 0. And then I, and then in cow two, 
oops, is going to be equal to rankings 0 and j. So, right, um, so, so far we're just saying uh, we have to read in each pair for the first line and check whether those each pair is consistent for every other line. So we're just creating two variables for those pairs. And also we have to use pairs to count up how many pairs are actually consistent within, within each line. So in this case it's going to be in pairs equals to zero. All right, next we have to check um, whether cal i cal one is equal to cal two, and if not, then we have to check whether um, what we have to check whether they are they are consistent within each line. Okay, so now that we have two for loops, and then we're going to use them to uh, basically find the pairs and check for consistencies within the next few lines. We actually need to do something to our variables. So cal one is going to be the first of a pair, and cal two is going to be the second. And then pairs are just going to count how many pairs we have that are consistent. So um, now we actually have to check if cal one or cal two are actually unique. As um, if you noticed, if you notice, um, when cal one and cal two get initialized. They're both equal to the first one. In this case, it's going to be four. So we, we're trying to compare four with the rest of um, this uh, rest of the rankings. So we can't com actually compare four with itself. So what the loop is going to do is that it's actually going to hop over to one. So now we need to check um, if cal one is unique with cal two. So in this case, it's going to be if cal one is not equal to cal two, then that's when we know that um, the two rankings, the uh, two cows in the pair are unique. And we're just going to um, do stuff to it. So in this case, if cal1 is not equal to cal2, we're just going to run through the entire 2D array and check um, whether they are consistent within each line. So now we have to create new variables. I'm just going to use x and y. So in this case, x equals 0. Um, x is less than k. Um, x plus plus. So in increment. So in this case, we're going to set the indexes for the cows since um. The cows over here are just like the numbers. And let's say, in this case, for example, all these numbers are just cow numbers, and this is cow four, cow one, cow two, cow three. Um, however, their indexes would be zero, one, two, three. So in this case, we have to say, let's just say cow index one is equal to, we just gotta initialize it as a um, integer. So in this case, cow and int cow index one equals zero, and int cow index two equals zero. Now we have to just, um, this is the second part of um, looping through our 2D array. So it's basically like the one we used to read in our input. Um, however, it's, we're doing completely different stuff here within the loops. So let's just do it. y equals zero. Um, y is less than n. So in this case, not k again, n, as the 2D array is k by n times long. In this case, and then y plus plus. So now we actually have to check um, for consistency. So let's if, if we just say, so in this case, we need to find the indexes for cal1 and cal2 and compare them to see if they're consistent with their original um, rankings on the first line. So in this case, we have to check if rankings um, x, y. So this is saying it's the next um, element we read in for the loop is equal to um, cal1 then in cal index. So in this case, we're just finding the index for cal1 and cal2. So in this case, cal index y equals y. And be aware that we're using y, not x, because x is just going to be the column that it's in. And y is going to be um, the, that column's index. For example, um, if we just take a look at this 4, this 4 is on the second level. Um, so in this case, x would be 2. However, y would be 0, and that's the index we want. So in this case, I don't know why. Oh yeah, sorry, forgot. Always remember it was two. And then we have to add another if statement, not else if, as um we need to check for both cases. So if ranking x y equals to cal two, then cal index two equals y. All right. So now we have to check if rankings one is less than ranking um if the index of cal1 is less than the index of cal2, as cal1 is going to be the one in front. For example, cal1 is 4 and cal2 is 1. Therefore, we have to check if 4 is still, um, if in 4's index 
is still um, less than, in this case, let less, because the lesser the index, the more front it is. So in this case, we have to check if force index is less than one for each of these lines, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. So in this case, I think the indenting is going to be um, right here. So yeah, so if, if cal index one is less than cal index two, then um, pairs need to be added. So this is the amount of, vi um, of valid pairs we have. And then now we need to check um, if these um, pairs are actually equal to K. As um, if we don't check that, it's, we're going to get extra pairs as we're over counting some. So we so every time pairs is equal to k, we need to add increment our counter. Or count put blocks. And finally, we just print out our count. So this loop is going to do everything for us, and we just print pw dot print out our count down here. So the, yeah, this is just simple. We just on um, pw dot print line print out count pw.close br.close. So now we actually we can actually test our code as I'm pretty sure that's all we need to do. So if we just open this up, we can create a new test file within our IML. So test.in. Um, if you if you don't know how to do this, you can just plug it into your um you just go straight in and test that in. We're just gonna copy this input here. Oops. Uh, get it like that. And then um if we start running that Oops. We are processing exit code zero, and if we check our input output, we get a clean value of four, which is in this case is the correct answer. So now, um, if we're just going to put it like the real contest, we're just going to plug it into the use code website. So now let's in this case let's just um, I'll find my file and I'll plug it in and I'll see if I get all of them correct uh, I'll see you soon all right guys I'm back and in this case I have to change um, the test the uh, input and output files to gymnastics not test um test is just used for local testing so I actually have to change it to the one they want in this case gymnastics so if we do that and then we choose it again and we submit it we can see how we did on this problem we got one test case six test cases and finally 10 test cases so that was 2019 december contest bronze cow gymnastics um i hope you enjoyed the video please consider subscribing if you enjoyed um it's completely free and um it's completely free and you can and the worst cases you just unsubscribe later but no pressure, no pressure. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.